our assignment is going to be to shade a ball or or we can say a shade a spear so what I want you to do first is you're going to need a ruler and your pencil your two like a your number two pencil the one that it should say HB on it just to give you an idea and I say these pencils can be used for a lot of things is that in a pencil set with a full range of pencils from 5B all the way to 6H the HB is right in the middle so the HB can give you a lot of range so the common pencil that we use all the time can be used for this project so what I want you to do first is to put a border around I'm just going to put a border measuring off the edge I'm going to put a border like one in and a half inch border let's make little tick marks so I'll make it one and a half inches and I'm going to start light you know, I always say you can start light and then commit so I'm going to light line down here and the same thing over here the light line and I've already started with a line coming down half inch and a half and an inch and a half here so I know now I can go ahead and commit and make that line much stronger so I can just go ahead and make myself a nice border this gives you a nice finished drawing at the end of the day so your so your work looks nice and neat now you can put in this in video format so that you can look at it over and over again or you can do this project at your own pace so here and then the same here The next thing that I want to do is I want to just put in a horizon line. So I'm going to bring a horizon line down, let's say two and a half inches. I'll measure off this line, bring it down two and a half inches. If you want to make it accurate, measure off the outside edge, two and a half inches. And the same thing on the other side, about two and a half inches. And I'm going to make a very light line because I'm going to I don't I'm going to erase some of the lines that are in the middle okay so the next thing that I want to do we just find something round I'm going to use this old CD so you can make a circle about two inches this is probably about four and a half inches so it's large enough so that you can see me while I'm working on the video so I'm going to drop the CD down and make my circle. So now I have my circle here. And what I'll do now is, because I made it light, the drawing light, I can take this out right here. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to just... This, I'm going to make a decision and say that the light source is going, to, it's going to come in from this angle here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put my light source here. So knowing that, I need to put in a shadow. So this is where we need our ellipse again. So lightly, you can draw an ellipse. Now if you've been drawing ellipses, you know, just practicing drawing ellipses, then it should be easy for you. You want a, cont a continuous circle. You see I'm drawing right through. So this is like my skeleton. The other thing that I want to do is what happens when we're drawing something in the round is that we have what we call a core shadow. So that core shadow, I'm going to make another skeleton. I'm going to make another ellipse, a light ellipse right here I'm going to swing it around so I have a full ellipse 
Now, I only want the front and the front of this. So I can now go ahead and erase this back line of the ellipse and also this part of the ellipse at the bottom. So now, the only thing that you should see is this ellipse peeking out here and ending right about here and this area right here. This area is our core shadow and you're going to get a handout. So in this core shadow, what I want to do is to start and I'm going to get rid of this pencil because I'm going to start shading right in here. What I want to do is to be able to shade here because this is where the light hits and then it trails off afterwards and it's going to fade out and then you're going to get some reflective light and you're going to have a shadow here. Okay. You want to keep this kind of light because actually you don't want to show a line around the shadow. So I'm going to start up here first and I'm going to start by shading and you're going to be able to see this in real time. So, so this will be helpful. I'm just kind of like extending my pencil out and shading. Doing this, this lets me know that I'm following that line that's going to go around, All right? Now on the ball or on the spear, this is the darkest area, but I don't want, what I need to do now is I need to fade this out. I don't want to see this line here. I just want to know that that is fairly dark in that area. So what I'm going to do now is and we can start on this side is to fade this start to shade this out so we're going to start making what we call half tones make these half tones and we just keep shade them out and as I'm shading I'm trying to get rid of this line here I want to kind of like fade it out so we just keep shading. You can use the side of your pencil. So we keep fading it out, moving that shape around. Like this, we just keep moving it around, shading. Now the light, where the light hits it, you know, they, they call it like a highlight or photographers might call it like a hot spot so like maybe somewhere around here I'm gonna kind of leave that alone but I now have have an idea of how much tone I want but I still need to keep working this just use the side of your pencil until you fade this out you're gonna have to use you may have to use like a nice subtle touch light touch just let the paper and the pencil do the work for you just move your pencil around like this and shade it out smoothly I may give it just a little bit more shade sh shading at the base but as you can see now, I'm starting to get where you saw a distinctive line in there. Now you begin to see that it's not there anymore. I'm fading that out. So we just keep working that shape. So this is a relatively simple project. But you have to take your time. You can't rush through this let the pencil do the work for you and you actually you're seeing this being done in real time so you can you can see what I'm what I need to do to get it to work okay so see how I fade that out now what I want to do now I have a shorter distance from here to here 
I want to fade it out, but I also want to leave reflective light on this side. So I'm going to begin to shade this area. Knowing that I want to leave some reflective light over here. So you can kind of like put in some half tone just to get some tone down quickly. But as from here to here, I want to fade it out. So slowly you kind of like fading that out. And shade. And take your time. Don't rush it. Everything. Save these drawings. We'll take a look at them later. Fade this out on the side. So I'm still leaving that shape. But constantly trying to fade it. I want to get rid of that line there. Retaining that core shadow. You should be able to see that core shadow there. As the light comes down, it can it can't bend around. Same thing happens with cylinders too. So we get that. We just fade it out. And art is always about relationships. So you probably can see this when you look around look at different objects like especially reflect highly reflective objects and you'll see this core shadow thing working on those objects especially like chrome railings uh, anything that has like really like distinctively like light white light so you can see how I'm smoothing this out now the darkest area in this drawing you would think it's here but it's really not the darkest area is going to be where this ball lands on the surface so if I want to make this look like it's landed on this surface here the darkest area is going to be in this shadow especially at the base of the shadow where the ball hits so here you can really you can put in some dark tone and what I want to do is I'm going to put in the shadow but as the shadow moves away from the object it's going to lighten but the closer it is to the shadow it's darker so I like to make my lines work with the plane or the surface. So if the surface is going back like that, I draw my lines going back like that. I'm going to take my time here and just so I can get that. If, you're, if your pencil goes over the lines this way or this way, you can go back with an eraser and just clean that up with an eraser. I'm just going to take my time so that I don't have to go back with the eraser. So here, keep working that shadow. Shading. So the assignments that we're going to be doing, we'll, we'll work with the pads for a while. We'll do some drawing. In fact, drawing is the key foundation to everything else anyway. So. Sometimes you might find an object, if you have true light, if you had a ball and you put it down with on a white surface, you might find a double shadow. But we're in control of this one. So I was saying like relationships are important because just by putting this shadow in now, the reflective light shows up more here. I got that. This paper is good. The paper that where you the drawing paper or this multimedia paper pad, pads that you have by Canson. 
it's good because it has a nice tooth to it so it helps the laying down nice tone try not to move your pads around a lot because you don't want this to smudge when we get back to school we'll put some fixative on it to keep it from smudging so shading that area next thing I'm going to do is the background here and that's going to make this pop out even further we have our horizon line we'll leave this white but in here we'll put in another tone maybe just a little bit darker and that'll make the, the ball pop out even more so So, we'll work around for you for those that are used to like rushing through stuff don't rush through it don't rush through it take your time and if you lay your pencil down on the side you can if you want to cover more ground you can cover more ground this way. You can probably see it starting to happen now already that as I work the tone around this, it makes this pop out. So I have two pencils, so if I run out, you have, I'm making a video, so I have to have a couple of pencils ready to go. And one stop and go to the pencil shop here while we're working. Now the same process can be done with paint. You could paint something like but I would run the light, use the light the same way. And that beat you hear in the background, that's my alarm. Yeah, so. Uh, so. Some people think it's a fart smoke detector, but it knows that it's my alarm. Okay, so I'll clean that up a little bit. And now I want to get this side, because that'll bring out this, the, having the tone on this side will bring out this reflective light. We'll let that be seen. Now, you have an advantage. I'm making the video. If I weren't making a video, I probably would turn this drawing around and work on the other side. But because I'm making this video and I want you to see everything that I'm doing, I'm not going to move my paper around. But you can always move your paper around. Whatever it makes life easier for you. Um, so just Shading this in. See now this is really bringing this out. Like I said, it's always about relationships. Color relationships, tone relationships. So having these relationships brings this out. See, I don't even need to draw. I didn't even need to draw a line. Now I have implied line because of this entire shape. And some, some of us look at this as negative space. So, I mean, you can use the same. I used the CD. You can use a CD too. Probably, you probably still have some CDs around. Everything is not in the clouds. We have an old CD can use that to make the circle. If you have a compass, even better. Okay. And, just kind of... and the more sensitive you are to seeing light and shadow, the better. You can see everything, you know, all the little 
places where it's little, we call them holidays, or areas that need to be filled in a little bit, just to touch it up. So I touch up that space. And here. You get that. So I'll probably do the same in our next session. We do some shading. I'm gonna try and set up something a little bit differently. But this is the first time we've gone online. So So here, you know, you can see like the core shadow. And don't worry like if your hands a little bit heavier than mine, if you if you put down a little bit heavier core shadow. Uh, that's okay. Yours is darker than this one. That's okay. You know, it depends on your hand, how your hand is. Once you get the basics down, you can always go back in and touch it up. So I'm just touching it up a little bit and touch it up. Sometimes when I'm working with line, I may take away like lighting this line. Really don't need that line to be as dark. But just for this assignment, it's okay. You can just you can do it this way. So you see now we have this hot spot or the highlight right here. We have our core shadow, which gives us that and because we fade it out, it gives it the sense of that is the roundedness of the form. Here we have the reflective light over here. We have the shadow or the occlusion shadow right here and this cast shadow here. So this occlusion shadow is really dark. It's very dark in this area. Now the thing is like, why, why would you do this? The same phenomenon happens in everything that we draw. You know, if I'm drawing a face, I'm going to see this. If I'm drawing a face and I'm drawing the eye, I may see this. Am I drawing the face and the nose or the lips? I'll see this kind of light and the form happening on the light. And that's what makes things look rounded. You, and you want your drawings to have that feeling that they're rounded, not flat. You know, so, I mean, I can work this thing for a while just to get it right. Okay, so that's what I want you to work on. So remember, you want to put that border around it. It should look like this one, basically, with the core shadow, with the half tone, with the reflective light, with the occlusion shadow right here, this point, this cast shadow that fades out. You shouldn't have a hard line around this. So if you make your, your lines light, you won't see a hard line. It should just look like it's just a shadow going off to the side. Okay. Save the drawings.